I've seen a lot of comments. I've been reading them. But now I'm going to get 10 straight minutes of Larry Bird facts that will change your mind on who's the GOAT. All right. Now, we, we watched the breakdown video, Making the Case. All right. I had thoughts. But after these 10 straight minutes of facts, we're going to see. Okay, we're going to see. With a 6, 9 inches frame and an unparalleled basketball IQ, Larry Bird was a force to be reckoned with on the court. Mm. His silky smooth shooting stroke, combined with a fierce competitive spirit, hey, made him one of the most feared and respected players of his era. Beyond the numbers and accolades, Larry Bird's impact on the game extends far beyond his statistical achievements. He embodied the blue-collar work ethic and the never-say-die attitude of the heartland. His grit, determination, yeah. and clutch performances in critical moments became the stuff of legend. You said Larry Bird versus Vince Carter? Come on now. It's Larry Bird. All right. Welcome to the Squad Dawkins channel. Here we give you 10 straight minutes of awesome facts on the great Larry Bird. Mm. Nobody, nobody worked as hard as Larry. He was the first guy there. He was the last guy to leave. He wore that body out with the jumpers hey, and, the running and the movement and the, and the concentration and the focus and the discipline and the sacrifice. He had it all. Larry Bird dominated his era, and no fact may better prove that point than this one. For six straight seasons from 1981 to 1986, Bird was either the MVP or the runner-up. And he also finished mm. in the top two spots in seven out of eight seasons from 1981 to 1988. Larry Legend is the only person in NBA history to win league MVP, coach of the year, and executive of the year. From the 1984-85 season through the 1987-88 season, Larry shot 51.7% from the field, 41.4% from three-point... Yo. That boy... That boy had a strap on him, all right? Range, and 90.1% from the free throw line. That means Larry Legend doesn't just have a 50-40-90 season on his resume, but he has he a four-season stretch of... That's and people used to say, uh, who had the triple-doubles record? Um, but when Russ was doing it, that's a, that's a stat line. Having a 50-40-90... 50-40-90 During And averaging that over a course of time... Is, do y'all think that's harder or averaging a triple-double over seasons? In that stretch, he averaged 28.1. And the fact that we're bringing those up, that means Westbrook got to be, you know, up there in the A. Hey. Points per game. Other than the great Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, mm. no player has ever scored that many points per game in a single season while putting up 50, 40, 90 percentages. And again, Larry did that over a four-year stretch. Four years. Larry Bird has one of the greatest performances of all time that people don't talk about quite enough. Officially, only four players in NBA history have ever achieved the incredible quadruple double, and Larry Legend was very close to joining this elite few. It was on mm. February 18, 1985 against the Utah Jazz. According to Larry himself, this may have been the greatest game of his career as he poured in 30 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, 9 steals, and 2 blocks on 59.1. Whoa, one more steal? Poof. Shooting. The Celtics were destroying the Jazz in just about every aspect. And at the end of the third quarter, they yeah, were leading he, by 22 points. I, bro, I heard about this game. They should have let him get the steals, bro. Ah, listen, listen. We're going for records here, okay? Get the... And that's it, all right? Due to this bird didn't even play in the fourth quarter, that means he almost put up an insane quadruple-double in, in only quarters. three quarters. Casey Jones was the Celtics head coach. And when he realized early in the fourth quarter that Larry was only one still shy of the historic quadruple double, he asked him if he would like to go back into the game, but Bird refused and said he already did enough damage. His shot was just so, like, perfect, you know, and, and not only was it perfect, you know, my mother-in-law nicknamed his, his jump Yo, shot. Yo, that's, that's a good mentality, though. He's like, oh, we already did enough. I don't even need that, you know what I'm saying? Got silent death because... When he shot it, the ball just like rolled in the air and it was almost like it was playing a song the way it was like just moving in the air and then it would just swish through. Larry mm. shot 37.6% from three point distance, which is an even greater percentage than Damian Lillard's, who now many people are putting in the conversation of the greatest shooters of all time. Larry was also much better from three point range in the second half of his career over the first, 
The reason for this is because Larry's rookie season in the NBA was also the year that the NBA introduced the three-point shot, which ah. was 1979. This means that Bird wasn't practicing the three ball throughout his years in high school and college. Instead, he literally developed his three-point shot during his years in the NBA. And he That's crazy. He didn't even have a three-point line. Came in one year and was like, oh, we got we got that? Hold on. Let me, let me cook up real quick. He hadn't but that that shows like great people are gonna be great, bro. All right, no matter what place in time you put them. Mastered it until the mid 80s, which drastically affected his career percentages. On top of that, Bird was an even better shooter when it mattered the most, mm. as he shot 42.2 percent from three point range over his career in the NBA Finals. That Finals percentage is greater than the Finals efficiency of both Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. This guy, I think he That's was crazy. going to pay, play basketball. Seeing him come in and, and making the adjustment early, taking a team that had won 20 games the year before or next year. I mean, you know, they're 40 plus and the next year they're mm. 60. Larry Bird had one of the best rookie campaigns in recent memory. Even if he came when he was supposed to compete with other elite stars like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Julius Irving to win an MVP award. The forward averaged 21.3 points and 10.4 rebounds per game while also showing the capability to dominate defenses. Unsurprisingly, Dang. Larry accumulated MVP votes and managed to finish fourth in the MVP race as That's a rookie. Fire. He immediately turned the Celtics franchise around. A year after winning 29 games, Boston, with Bird leading the charge, won 61 games. Dang. Bird won Rookie of the Year, shooting 47.4% from the field, 40.6% from three, and 83.6% from the line. The Celtics had yet another superstar cooking. in their history, but this one was seemingly a little different. At age 23, Bird only finished runner-up to Kareem Irving and George Gervin in the MVP race. In the 1980-81 season, a year after making the Eastern Conference Finals with rookie Bird on the squad as the best rookie in the league, That's the crazy. Boston Celtics once again had their star for the season. Bird went out with a bang, competing in 82 games. The forward's numbers were very consistent, as he posted 21.2 points and 10.9 rebounds per game while leading the Celtics to... I guess, like, being there to witness this in person had to be crazy, all right? I guess, like, the GOAT is always going to come from either your time period or the time period that immediately precedes you, probably to the best record in the East. No team could stop the player when he was cooking as a squad. Because, like, well, we're... Everybody's going to think what they went through in their glory days was the best, though, you know? But what people are going... What, witnessing now, go activity. Or passer and rebounder. The Celtics ended up defeating the Houston Rockets in the NBA Finals, which capped off an all-time great season by Larry and his first NBA championship. Bird finished second three times before he finally captured his well-deserved MVP award. Bird's stat line during the 1984 season was incredibly complete with 24.2 points, 10.1 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists, 1.8 steals, and 0.9 blocks per game. As expected, Bird won his first MVP award and also winning in seven games against the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals. Hey. Bird had the highest MVP finish of his career to date in the 1984-85 season when he posted 28.7 points, 10.5 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists. He's low-key averaging like 10 plus rebounds every season. 1.6 steals and 1.2 blocks per game. He finished first in the MVP race. And everything else is just like going up. The superstar Celtics player came ahead of legends Magic Johnson and Moses Malone. Bird had the numbers to win the MVP award, and the narrative was on his side because the team finished first in the East. Mm. Bird began staking his claim as possibly the most dominant talent at the small forward spot in NBA history. Larry was also one of the most clutch players in NBA history. He had numerous game-winning shots in both regular season yo, and the playoffs. Yo, listen, listen. Hold in on, NBA hold on, hold on. history. This person right here definitely had a parlay that night. Imagine, like, watching games back then and, like, people who bet are, like, in attendance. Like, you know, betting now, people bet from their phone. Everybody bet, you know what I'm saying? W whatever. Back then, you had people at the game watching it. All right, like. He definitely had a bet in the building. Watch this. He had numerous game-winning shots. That, that, you see how he... Mm, but went back to thinking. 
boy, he got some money on the line. ...in both regular season and the playoffs, and he was known for making the big play when his team needed it most, whether on offense or defense. Larry was arguably the greatest passing forward of all time. His Tough. court vision, high basketball IQ, and team play was off the charts. This aspect of his game is sometimes overlooked because of the reality that he played in the same era as Magic Johnson. But as far as 6'9 small forwards go, Larry was as close to Magic's Magic. passing skills. Larry averaged a whopping 10 rebounds per game over the course of his career. He wasn't just a solid rebounder. He was one of the all-time greats at it. Among primary small forwards, Larry has the third greatest rebound per game average in NBA history. These are one of those stats that testify to the hustle and heart that he played with each and every night of his career. Bird was also an underrated defender. Larry played with heart and effort on both sides of the basketball every game. He wasn't the greatest shot blocker, but he did average more blocks per game over his career than LeBron James has. Larry also That's averaged crazy. a high 1.7 steals per game over his career. He was tenacious and scrappy. And like, defense always speaks on effort. Somebody can be better than you. You give enough effort, all right? You can do enough, all right? He was a quality on vault. That's why you got to respect the hustlers, all right? Defender. He also made three all-defense teams in his career. In 1985, Bird was at home with his mother and was wanting to help her build her new driveway. While Bird was out there shoveling gravel for his mom, something happened that would change the rest of his career. Bird brutally injured his back, which would then be an ongoing battle with pain and spasms Dang. for the rest of his career. Bro, that's crazy. Somebody just typed this in the comment section. It was like, because uh, everybody tells me about how he got he played with his hurt back, right? But then I found out it wasn't even from basketball. My man was out here doing the good Lord's work, shoveling snow. You know what I'm saying? Back, which would then That's be crazy. an ongoing battle with pain and spasms for the rest of his career. Mm. Ultimately, these back issues would play a part in Bird leaving the game earlier than many other athletes. Though while this injury begun and took place in 1985, Bird still played seven seasons after that injury. In 1986, with the back injury and the enormous pain, Bird won his third MVP in a row. He is the only player to ever accomplish this since the NBA merger. I'm really proud to, to receive this award for the third time, but I really don't feel that my career is over. I think I can win it some more. The best part about Larry Bird wasn't the fact he won three straight MVPs. It wasn't how he won Rookie of the Year and then guided the Boston Celtics to three championships in the 80s. What's best about Bird is he never changed. With the Celtics, he was the same guy he was at Indiana State and the same guy he was at Springs Valley High School in French Lick, Indiana. Bird never cared about glory. Fame and fortune hey. never changed him. Individual achievements didn't motivate him. He was all about winning. Tell us in the comments, That's what fine. is your favorite Larry Bird moment? The, that, that makes the best teammates, though, is the people who don't care who gets what, all right? As long as we win, all right? We go out there, do what we got to do, bring the W home, we chilling. Moment. And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. For even more basketball content... Hey, look, I, I will say, Larry Bird is significantly higher than... Before I started my Larry Bird journey, okay. Am I putting him number one? Um, not yet, all right. We still got more research to do, okay. But we're going to get to the bottom of who I really think number one is. But me, per like, I think my favorite player is Kobe, for sure, all right. But the best, hmm. Listen, we'll, we'll get to this journey. I, I see a lot of um, disagreeing with the things I say in the comment section, which is, which that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's entitled to their opinion, even if they're wrong, you know? <laughs>